Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Yakuza Kiwami. On the last episode we continued on with sub stories and this episode, eh, pretty much the same thing, but... <laughs> Before I continue on with doing sub stories, I actually found out something in between episodes that's actually a little bit embarrassing, and that is this little accessory right here. So... It says in the description, this is a device said to help find people around town who are in need of help. And when I read that, I automatically assumed, oh, it must mean the intervene. It must mean the people who are getting ganged up and you go in to intervene and, you know, that, that style of fighting. I went, okay, I sort of just writ it off as that's what it did. Turns out that's actually not what it does. It actually shows you on the map where substories are located. And apparently this was also an option in the- in Yakuza 0, and I didn't know that either. So... <laughs> I could have used this- this, um, used this item the entire time just to find out when substories are available, and that's just funny to me. <sighs> Guys, I like to think I'm pretty okay when it comes to video games. I like to think that, uh, I can pay attention and, you know- oh, sorry, Matt. <laughs> Um, I like to think I can pay attention, you know, and not embarrass myself by missing key information, but sometimes even I can be a little bit inept. That being said, I think that voice was coming from the store. Uh, should I say something? Uh, maybe it's an emergency. I should ask if he's okay. Hey, you okay in there? Oh, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Please help me. Uh, what's wrong? Did you run out of toilet paper? Well, uh, it's rather embarrassing to say, but yes, that's precisely the problem. You sure there aren't any spare rolls in the stall? Oh, believe me, I've looked. Hmm. Looks like the store next to it is empty too. Oh no, then I'm doomed. Sir, you don't have anything I could use, do you? Like pocket tissues? Hey. Yes, that will be perfect. May I have some? I guess I could find some tissues. They hand them out all over the place. Well, Kiryu, if you are actually paying attention when I went into my inventory, you'll notice that I have pocket tissues ready. Quite a lot of them, in fact. I have a feeling this man's gonna need them. Boy. Hey. Oh, the voice of an angel. Sir, did you bring me something I could use as toilet paper? Oh, jeez. I do have some pocket tissues. What should I do? Well, I'm not as hell- I'm sure as hell not using them. Here, try this. It's... pocket tissues. F thank you so much! I can finally go outside again- <laughs> Oh, what's wrong? Oh, the second wave is coming! But I've used all this tissue! Oh jeez, I know that feeling. That poor, poor man. I'm sorry to ask, but can you bring me more pocket tissues? I could use an extra pack for safety, so maybe d d two packs? Uh, I guess so. Thank you so much. Oh, my stomach. This is going to be bad. Two packs of pocket tissues this time. I can swing that. Ah, oh, thank god my intuition was right. Also, thank god it's not me in there. Yes. Hey. Ah, oh, there you are. Did you bring two pocket tissues? Ask for arches. Oh, I do have the pocket tissues. Give him over, man. He's in. He's in dire need of them. Thank you so much. Oh, we should do it. Oh, sorry for all the trouble. I had to use both of those packs, so I'm glad I asked for extra. So, you're good now, right? Yes, I'm fine. Ah! 
What is it now? Now my nose is bleeding. Profusely. Seriously, I don't have time for this man. But please don't say that. You're my only hope. I hate to ask, but could you bring me more tissue packs? I think the spare was a good idea, so maybe this time... Uh, can you bring me three packs? Uh? Just give it time, your nose will stop bleeding. No, it's like a geyser. If I don't stop this, I could very well die. That's the magnitude of this blood fountain. Fine, fine. I doubt it, but I'll bring you some. Just calm down. Thank you so much. So, three packs of pocket tissues. Yes, I'll go get them. God, thank God I actually have pocket tissues. I've heard somewhere that if your nose starts bleeding for more than, like, ten minutes, then that is really bad, and that's, like, going to a hospital or, like, doctor's worthy. I don't get um, nosebleeds that often, so... I don't know. Hey. Oh, there you are. Did you bring the three packs of pocket tissues I asked for? Just take them. I don't know how I'm handing them over, considering that I have- there's a great big door in front. Maybe he's just- I, I'm just assuming that he slowly opens the door, and then he is like, one hand comes out. Because I guess- yeah, that would make sense. It's not like a- it's not like a- it's probably just a singular stool, so, yeah. I don't know why I'm paying so much attention to how I'm handing tissues over. Oh, I could finally return to the light of day! Oh, sorry for the trouble. Hmm? hmm? Oh, are you okay now? Hey. Yes, my stomach ache has gone and my nose stopped bleeding. And if something else happens, I have these extra tissues. Heh, <laughs> glad you're prepared. Oh, I'm sorry. I never introduced myself. I'm the CEO of this company. <laughs> Rokaku-san, huh? So you're a CEO. I'm Kiryu. Pleasure to meet you, Kiryu. Here, I'd like you to have this for your trouble. I got the Stone of Enduring. <laughs> How apt. I already have one, but... Eh, since you just gave me this one, I'll send that. I'll send the other one to storage. <laughs> I was on my way to a business meeting when I suddenly came down with a killer stomachache. It's never happened before, so I don't usually carry tissue. Yeah, nobody really carries around tissue. It's weird, when you think about how often it gets forced into your hands. Too true, my good man. Either way, you are a lifesaver. Thank you so much. Well, I have to make go make excuses about that meeting. If you'll excuse me. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Being prepared for something leads to fewer worries. I should keep that in mind too. Did not expect to gain some wisdom, for, wisdom from someone who was literally crapping his pants out. Well, onwards to the next sub-story. Which, thankfully, is right over here. Once again, by Debola. Also, it looks like there's one by the bowling alley. I have no idea what that one is. Does it actually show the mark? No, it doesn't. Guess I'm just gonna have to try and... Find where this person's located. I'm guessing it's in the dance floor. Hmm. You look important enough. Uh, um, excuse me. Hmm. Huh? Can I ask you something? Do you know where I could find a platform here? A platform, huh? I don't think this club has one. Oh, really? How sad. I was hoping they'd have one here. Uh, sorry to disappoint, but a platform? <laughs> That's nostalgic. They were pretty trendy in the disco clubs during the bubble economy. Oh wow, you were in the disco clubs during the bubble? Yeah, I was actually the king of dance. I mean, yeah, back when I was 20 years or old or so. I used to be a regular popping in to dance my cares away. 
Oh, wow. Can you tell me more about what it was like to go to a disco club in the bubble? Well, the women were dancing in these gaudy tight dresses, the men would hit on them relentlessly, and everyone drank like fish. It was kind of one long drunken party. I see, that must have been quite a sight to behold. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but why are you so interested? Oh, there's a roll up for a movie set in the disco clubs of the bubble economy era. The movie is called Disco Queen of Love. I, I think that's actually a name of one of the songs in Yakuza 0. I think. I can't exactly remember. I'm, I'm an aspiring actress, and I'm going to audition for the lead role. I see. So you're trying to learn about the time period. Yeah, I heard disco clubs had platforms during the bubble. I wanted to see one in person, so I came here, but... I turned 20 this year, so I was just a kid during the bubble. But if I want to play a part of someone who really lived in the era com uh, convincingly, I figure I'd try to learn more about the bubble economy itself. I see. That's pretty dedicated. <laughs> Thank you. I've always wanted to be an actress ever since I was a little girl. That's why I don't cut corners when it comes to the smallest details. Huh. <laughs> well, good luck. I hope you can nail down the error somehow. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry, I should have introduced myself. I'm Aya Yabuki, and you are? <laughs> Name's Kiryu. So, you were a regular at the disco clubs during the bubble, right? Hmm? Yeah, I guess. Um, if you don't mind, would you mind telling me more about what it was like back then? then. What? <sighs> oh, if I can get real deal details from someone who actually lived the bubble economy, I think I can nail the audition. The stories of someone like you would help me recreate a true bubble economy persona. Well, I see your point, but why ask me? Your parents were probably aware of how things were. Uh, my parents are a couple of country folks. They never left their town, and they wouldn't know a thing about disco clubs or the bubble. I see. So, uh, can I rely on you to tell me a little more about it, Kiryu-san? Oh, come on, please help me. <laughs> sure. I guess I can make some time. Oh, thank you very much. But I wouldn't even know where to start. What kind of information about the bubble economy would you want? Hmm, mm, let's see. Oh, uh, I heard people did some weird stuff to hail a cab. What did they do? Oh, I remember that one. Uh, r really? Uh. Cabs were pretty popular back then. People would st st uh, stay out late partying at a disco club or something, and then the cabs were the best way to get back home. It got kind of competitive, so people would do interesting things to get the cabbie's attention. Oh, like what? I'm trying to remember what we did to hail cabs. <laughs> we body slammed the cabs. Nah, we were waving 10,000 yen bills like it was nobody's business. We used to flash our 10,000 yen bills at the cab drivers. Huh? How would the cab driver have seen it? Well, we'd hold them in our hands and wave them around like this. What? Is that really what people did? Wow, is that a custom animation? Probably not, that's probably an animation from an NPC, but I've never seen Kiryu do that. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. <laughs> Back then, cab drivers had the luxury of picking their passengers. If the destination was too close, they'd actually refuse to take the job. So we'd wave 10,000 yen bills to indicate that we were going far away and willing to pay to, pay to the drivers. Are you serious? Wow, the bubble economy was so intense. But that's really good info to know. I think that tells me a lot about the lifestyle. Huh, that's good. But uh, I need to know more. Uh, please tell me about the bubble economy era. Uh, sure. What else do you want to know? Uh, let's see. I'm really curious about how relationships worked. I'm sure dating was quite different back then. Hmm, dating, huh? Thinking back on it, one of the popular things guys did was drive women around in their cars. Oh, you mean like they take their girlfriends places? That sounds pretty normal. Guys still take their girlfriends places today, you know? Yeah. No, see, most of the time they weren't even dating yet. Women would ask guys to drive them around, but most of these guys ended up never making it past friends. What? So men went through the trouble of driving women around even though they weren't together? Uh. Yeah. Especially if they had a nice car. A nice car would mean they had money. But since everyone had money, men really had to go out of their way to impress girls. 
Oh, wow, I see. So men had to really work hard to get girls' attention then. Now what? Now that I think about it, didn't those guys have a silly nickname? I thought I remembered hearing it once. Oh, what was it? Runner boys? Doggy boys? No. Oh, yeah, they did have a nickname. Oh, I knew it! Do you remember what it was called, Kiryu-san? Hmm, it was the name that made fun of them for driving women around because they were- they told them to. Um... Was it Leg Lags? Uh, le 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 Leg Lads, even. Jesus Christ, my... Um... It wasn't Leg Lot Lags. It doesn't- Lot Knee Net Lads doesn't sound... I'm pretty sure it was Leg Lads. Let, 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 oh my god, that's a ton twister and a half. Holy shit. I'm gonna go with lead lads. Yep. Leg lads! Okay, just just take it. I remember now. It was leg lads. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Leg lads. But why did they call them that? Because these women used to use them as a means of transportation. Kind of like using the men as their legs. Oh, I see, but it's a little sad that they made they get made fun of when they were just trying to do something nice. Heh, <laughs> you're right. Women had lots of nicknames for men back then. There were grub birds, gift guys, and keepercons. Men got pretty carried away with all the money they had, but women weren't innocent either. If they were the type to get a lot of attention, they went overboard too. Oh, so the economy was good, and everyone was high-spirited to a fault, eh? But that story really helped me understand the mindset of young men and women at the time. Huh, <laughs> that's good. Hi. Yeah, uh, please, tell me more about the economy. Uh, I guess I could tell you about the disco clubs you were saying you wanted to hear about. Oh, finally! This is the setting of the movie I'm auditioning for, so I'm really looking forward to this. The disco club was pretty similar to this club, actually. There was a dance floor, and off to the side, some VIP rooms. Men and women would basically just dance, drink, and party. Oh, I see. I've seen old footage on TV and stuff, but I guess disco clubs weren't so different from than today's clubs. Oh, but I did notice something different about the women in the disco club footage I saw. Mm. Hmm? What is it? Well, the clothes, for one. The women in the footage were wearing these really tight dresses, and they had this weird thing on their hand. What was up with those dresses, and what was the thing they had in their hand? Mm. Odd dresses and an item in their hand. The way disco woman dressed, huh? What were they wearing and holding? <laughs> a sailor dress and a katana! <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, what's that, um... OVA called? The super hyper-violent one, where... It, was it blood? Something blood. Oh, I can I can visualize it in my head, but I, I can't remember what it was called for the life of me. But I think it was a bodycon. No, it has to be bodycon dress and fan. I was given a fan. Uh. Oh, I remember now. They were wearing bodycon dresses and holding fans. Uh -huh. A bodycon dress? Uh. Yeah, it's short for body conscious. It was the trend at the time to really show off the body and hold a fan while dancing. I think the fans were called Feather Fans. <laughs> wow, I've never heard of that before. Heh, <laughs> I guess that's what happens to trends. Oh, I want to wear one of those into my audition. Curious san do you happen to have one? Many. What? Why on earth would I have those? <laughs> oh, I suppose that's true. I actually do have a fan. What the hell are you talking about, Kiryu? Did you forget? Oh, but I would love to try those on for my audition. To recreate, really, truly create the, recreate the era. A body can dress and a feather hand, fan in my hand. Um, Kiryu-san, if you happen to find those items, would you mind bringing them back here? What? Why would I have to do your shopping for you? Oh, please, I beg of you. I'm not saying it needs to happen for sure, but if you do find them, I'd love to try them on. That's all. <sighs> Fine. But... Who knows if I could ever get hold of those, so I can't guarantee I'll come back. Oh, I understand. Thank you. How do I get roped into this? Oh, well. I guess if I find them somewhere, I can bring them back to the... Now that I think about it, though, did I see those on sale at Don Quixote? Holy crap, are we actually doing this? <laughs> Ugh, the things we do for people. 
Actually, I was just thinking, um, while walking out of Debola, there was something that I wanted to mention, um, I saw a comment, and you know who you are who made this comment, about, um, he was, uh, he made the interesting point of, do you think Majima has been overexposed? At the time of, th of this recording, I've now actually read those comments, and, um, I saw it got a few, uh, thumbs up as well, so, I, I'm guessing a few people saw it, and, um, I don't know, I feel like it is an interesting um, talking point. In my personal opinion, I'm not entirely sick of Majima. I don't think he's been overexposed, because basically the argument was, do you think he's been o do you think Majima has been overexposed with the amount of things that he does in games now? Uh, you know, being a playable character, you know, the Majima Anywhere system, the fact that he's a bigger part in Yakuza Kiwami 2. And honestly, no, I think it's fine. Um... Obviously, in Yakuza 5, he was downplayed a little bit more. I mean, he was still a big plot point. He was one of the, um, he was still a boss in the game. And, damn, that's expensive. This girl better appreciate it. But, honestly uh, speaking, I think, considering that they keep on doing different stuff with him, I think it's fine, because they're still using him in interesting ways. They've expanded on the character a lot in a good way. Um... Again, this is just my opinion. And he's interesting enough and has enough depth that I think um, he can be used in both serious and wacky ways. So, that's my two cents on the situation. And, oh my god, Majima, are you freaking serious? I was just speaking about you, and now here you are. Ah, oh, jeez. I'll meet you guys back at Debler in a second. I just need to deal with this guy. Freaking Majima. Hey, lady, how are you doing? Oh, Kiryu-san, did you bring me the bodycon dress and the feather fan? Yeah, I got them for you. Uh, y you did? R really? It's not something I'd lie about. Here you go. Yes, oh, they're just like the ones I saw the woman wearing in the video. Um... Are you sure I can have these? <laughs> Not like I'd have any use for them. Go for it. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Be right back. I'm going to go try them on. If she's actually gonna be if she's actually gonna change into it and I get to see, this is gonna be so worth it. <laughs> Kiryu San, thank you for waiting. Oh. God, that has to be a leftover asset from Yakuza 0. <laughs> uh, I love these Yakuza games, and they're, like, ample ability to reuse stuff. <laughs> you look pretty good in that dress. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, check it out! Hmm? That dress! <laughs> I gotta admit, that's very sexy! Oh... Hey, looks like you're starting to turn some heps. Oh, I guess so. This outfit's pretty flashy. How embarrassing. The women at the time probably weren't too embarrassed because everyone was wearing similar dresses. But when you're the only one, you kind of stand out. Oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, well, if you're happy with it, why don't you change back? Boy. Hey, what's going on? No, I won't change. If I'm too embarrassed to just to wear it, then there's no way I'll be able to audition in it. I need to capture the spirit of the era. Nanny. Huh? <laughs> I'm dressed for dancing, so that's what I'm gonna do. Are you sure? Hi. Yes. I bet I can even pull off some of the moves I saw on that footage at home. I see. But you know you're going to... They're going to call... You know you're going to call a lot of attention to yourself, right? People might think you're crazy or weird. <laughs> yeah, screw those people. I'll be fine. Keep your eyes on me, you san Uh, sure. I should keep my distance so nobody thinks I'm crazy too. Oh, come on, Kiryu. Let the lady have some fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Hey, what's going on here? What a cool dance. <laughs> hey, you've got the moves, girl. Huh. She does dance pretty well. <laughs> Oh, you're having so much fun. Can I join too?
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this one of the sons? I know. Sorry, give me a second. No, I don't think it's quite the same. Oh well. Yeah, yeah! Woo! She's really got the crowd moving. Maybe she's just the kind of person who draws others to her. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, guys! You're a great dancer! Oh, we should dance again soon! Oh, I'd love to. Okay, see ya. Oh, thanks for waiting, Kiryu-san. Huh, <laughs> you got the whole club going. Hi. Oh, yes, the customers around me were really into it. I had so much fun. Dancing in this dress made me feel like I could do things I wouldn't normally try. I bet the woman who lived in the days of disco felt the same way. Huh, I see. Well, they say clothes make the attitude. Oh yes, and it's all thanks to you giving me the body con dress and feather fan. I can't thank you enough. Huh, no problem. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a word? Huh? Um, sure. Huh? Who's this guy? That's a lovely outfit you got on. Oh, my outfit? You mean this body con dress? Oh, so you know what it's called, huh? Oh, of course. It's short for body conscious, I'm told. Okay. Oh, you know your stuff. You look pretty young, but you must be familiar with the bubble economy era, huh? <laughs> <laughs> sort of. I know about how people used to wave 10,000 yen bills to hail a cab anyway. Oh, you're right. But do you know why? Well, unlike today, the cab drivers could be more selective about their passengers, so to flag them down, people needed to indicate they had the money to go far, right? <laughs> That's correct! And you must know about the young men who would drive their lady friends around instead of using the cabs. Oh, you mean the leg lads! <laughs> there were also grub birds, keeper coons, and gift guys. Pretty sad nicknames, but pretty interesting times. <laughs> well, that's just wonderful. Hold on just a second. Why are you asking her all of these questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. I'm a film director. The name's Yamada. A film director? Yeah. Yeah, I came to the club to see if I could scout talent for my next project, Disco Queen of Love. That's when I saw this young lady dancing in the bodycon dress. Boy. Hey, oh yeah, isn't that the movie? Yes, that's the movie I was going to audition for in this dress. Is that so? Well, that certainly makes everything a lot easier then. Aya san, would you like to be cast in my next film? Uh -huh. Huh? huh? Are you s s serious? R really? Uh -huh. Yeah, you've really captured the essence of the bubble era, and your charisma has me quite taken. Oh my gosh, are you sure someone like me is qualified to play the lead role? Yeah, I think you're perfect. Oh, thank you very much. If you take me, I'd, I'd love to do it. Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Huh, that's some good fortune. I feel like I'm walking on air. Kiryu-san, I can't thank you enough for your help. I didn't do much. You were the one who studied hard and let yourself cut you loose on the dance floor in front of everyone. You deserve it. Oh, thank you. But I can't leave without thanking you in some way. Uh, please, take this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh my god, it's a weapon. Oh, that's great. I don't think I'll be needing this masterwork dagger. Wow, I'm so happy. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but be warned, I can be kind of a bear on set. Get all your tears out now, okay? Oh, of course, sir. Uh, you can be as strict as me as you need to be. Great attitude. Let's make a wonderful film. Okay. Well, I'll get going then. Looking forward to seeing you on the big screen. Oh, please do, Kiryu-san. Thank you very, very much. The bubble economy, huh? 
Wonder if things will ever be like that time again. Maybe cheer you, but let's hope it'll be less filled with, you know, scandals to do with plots of land and so forth. Well, next sub story's over here. Also, when Kiryu was, like, talking about the dress and how, like, you know, it looks a little bit garish, I get that, but, dude, look at the way you're dressed. Like, don't get me wrong, I like it, but you're not one to judge. <laughs> like, at all. Anyway, sir, looks like you're gonna be our next person of interest. Hmm? Mm. <sighs> how many times has it been? The man keeps mumbling about his sign. I guess I'll ask what's wrong. More graffiti again, what should I do? You keep mumbling to your sign, is something the matter? Well, I'm at a loss here. I'm the owner of this cafe, but... Someone keeps spraying graffiti over my sign, no matter how many times I clean it up. Wish I could do something. This town has a lot of hoodlums. Maybe they enjoy watching you spend a lot of time cleaning up your sign. Uh, I know. Could you keep watch? You look like you're good at fighting. What? I'd think you'd be able to catch whoever's doing this. I'll compensate you, of course. How about it? Uh, sure. Why not? I, I guess so. Uh, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> wow, I'm glad I asked. By the way, my name is Ogawa. My name's Kiryu. Okay, Kiryu-san. Could you keep watch here? I have to run the cafe. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, Kiryu-san. But if I stay out in the open, the culprit won't show up. I should leave for a bit and come back. Hmm, do you think that'll work? Well, I do, need, I do need to refill my health from that fight with Majima, so that'll probably be a good opportunity to do so. I'll be back in a second. Alright, I'm nice and healed up. Aha! There's a little punk. Hey. What? What, what do you want, man? Did you tag this sign? Nope, it was me. What? You, you little shit! Hey! Wait! Come back here! Damn, he ran off toward Tanhai Boulevard East West. Well, let's give chase! Hopefully give chase with less stuttering, Jesus Christ. It's been getting a little bit bad recently. That's the guy who was tagging the cafe sign. There you are. Huh? Well, who the hell are you? I've got no business with you. I need to talk to the kid hiding behind you. Huh? Oh well. So you think you could screw up the accuser, eh? You don't know who you're messing with, but don't worry, you'll learn soon enough. You obviously don't know who you're messing with either. I mean, for goodness sake. I looked at the badge on your Coat, it looks downright tacky. Deal with you in a second, kid. Come on. You're going to apologize to that old man. Ugh. Why are you harassing the cafe, huh? Did you put that kid up to all this? No. That's not actually... Stop stalling and answer me! I was just teaching them a lesson because they wouldn't pay us protection money. Strictly business, you know how it is. B besides, the kid is the owner's son. What? Huh? Hey, shut up! So what if I am? Usually a kid doesn't tag a cafe run by their own father. So you must have a reason, right? No, I don't. <sighs> Fine. I get it. 
I want to become a graphic designer, but my old man keeps bugging me about taking over the family business instead. So I wanted to teach him a lesson. And you decided to do that by hanging out with the Yakuza who want to harass the cafe for protection money? Yeah. If you have all this time to waste on petty vandalism, why not spend it on a heart-to-heart -heart with your father? Yeah, right. Pops only has the cafe on his mind. That's why I'm trying to make a statement that I'll get through to them. If you can take the initiative to do that, I think you have what it takes to let him know how serious you are. I'm sure your father isn't asking you to take over the family business lightly. So if you tell him how serious you are about graphic design, your father will understand, don't you think? It's up to you, kid. Y you're right. I'll let Pops know how I really feel and how serious I am. Good. I should go see how it, this ends. As I let him slowly walk away off screen. There we go. Ah, oh, jeez. Thank God our words, like, turned him over so quickly. Ah, oh, curious son. My boy came to clean about... Uh, oh my God. My boy came clean about the graffiti. I never would have guessed it was my own son. I'm sure he had his reasons, though. <laughs> Uh, yes, he told me about that too. Perhaps it wasn't good that I was so stubborn. Well, the vandalism is wrong, but I have to admit he's got a good sense of design, and a knack for painting. <laughs> really? Wouldn't have been able to tell with the squiggle on your sign there. I'm glad that your father recognized your passion. <laughs> this is a token of my appreciation. Thank you, carrier son. Look, I, I seriously don't need money. I'm going to talk with my son more often. Uh. Yeah, unless you have a heart-to-heart -heart sometimes, you'll never get through to each other. Uh. You're right. I'll try seeing things eye-to-eye -eye with Pops. Communication is key. If they figured that out from this instant, that's a huge step. Good luck with your dream. God, Kiri, you have so much internal words of wisdom, don't you? <laughs> Well, I think we have time for one more sub-story. We either got one on the other side of town, or we got one up here. And you know what? I've been trying to get the one up north for a while now, so how about we end off with that one? Be back in a second! Oh, K Kenji! It's really you! Kenji, isn't it? Man. What? I knew it was you. Kenji. It's- it's me! I'm your father! Kenji! What? Oh, good lord! Why are you all dressed up like a Yakuza, son? No, no w wait a sec. Do you know how long I've been looking for you? This guy seems to think I'm someone else. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Should I pretend for the old man's sake? Uh, d d d dad d dad is that you, Dad? I knew it was you, Kenji! Oh, you idiot! Where have you been off all this time? Your mother. She passed away last summer. Doubt I have much left time, time left either, as it stands. Now that i found you, though, I don't have any more regrets. I've been determined to stay alive long enough to apologize. Oh, this is get super awkward. Hmm, this talk might take a while. How about you come over to the park on Shi uh, Shichifuku Street? We could talk more there. Oh, that's my current living situation. That's something I want to give you. Got it? Uh, yeah, got it. Um, sure, Pops. I'll head on over there then. Oh, jeez. Feel bad for the old man. Also, Kiryu doesn't really strike me as the type of person who would like lie immediately. I don't know. Seems like the type who would uh, give it to him straight, but I don't know. He does seem down on his luck, so maybe he just wanted to lift his spirits a little bit. Hmm. 
I came to the park like I was told, but I don't see that old man anywhere. Huh? Are you Kenji-san by any chance? Uh... Seems that way. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Gensan's told me stories. Nice to see a face to go with him. Oh, Gensan ain't here right now, though. Gensan. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't know what his real name is, so we call your pups Gensan. That said, everyone around these parts calls me Tatsu. It's because I was born in the year of the dragon. I'm sure Gensan will be heading back here any minute. Huh, speak of the devil, that's him calling me right now. Well, you called that before the phone even started ringing. Hello, Gensan? What's wrong? Yeah, your son showed up here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What? Hey, hey, Gensan! Where are you right now? Damn it! How did this? All right, uh, stay right there. I'll get, I'll get to you as fast as I can. What's the matter? Gensan says he was jumped by homeless hunters. He's at the Champion District. Hey, uh, Kenji-san, could you go over and there ahead of me? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Champion District, right? Uh, right. I'll call for an ambulance. I'm counting on you. That is a good person who is looking out for his friend. Don't worry, Pops, I'm coming! Why does so much shit go down in the Champion District? Pops! That's... Gensan. Hey, are you okay? Oh, it's you, my Kenji. <laughs> I'm in a bad shape. What happened to you? Those brats. They said they were homeless hunting. It was a whole group of them. I was helpless. They took everything I had, Kenji. Even what I was hoping to give you. What did they look like? Uh, they were just a bunch of brats. After they were done with me, they ran off towards West Park. They couldn't have gone very far yet. Please, Kenji, get back what they stole from me, please. Uh. I promise I'll get everything back. Don't worry. West Park, eh? Ho ho ho. I'm gonna teach some kids a lesson. Get over here, you damn brats! I'm gonna make sure you get what's coming to you! Yo! Hmm, that's... Eh, uh, haven't, haven't got enough yet? Let's hunt some more, eh? Go find some defenseless bum. You know, easy prey. <laughs> Sounds like they're the homeless hunters. Hey, you guys! What do you want? You're the ones who beat up Gensan at the Champion District. Gensan? Ah, oh, you mean that smelly old bum? Huh? What of it? You gotta do something about it, old man! Gensan asked me to get back what you stole from him. Oh yeah? And what if I eat so no? <laughs> what can you do? You gonna ground me, old man? <laughs> Well, either way, we were bored. It's pretty fun to find old guys to beat the shit out of. Looks like our next punching bag came to us. So, old man, you want to get killed? It'll be fun. Why the hell would you even look at me and go, yeah, we can take him? Even if there are four of you. You're all little shit! God damn. Come on. This is just pathetic. Damn punts! Come on, give me your best shot. Weak. Uh, sorry, I'm really sorry. We'll give everything we took from that homeless guy. Uh, please, uh, d d let us go. 
Hope you all learned your lesson today. Hunting homeless people is idiotic. Stop before you're the one being hunted. Yeah. Looks like I was able to get back in San's wallet. I need to give it back to him at the Champion District. Oh, bad. We need to check, make, check and make sure that he's actually okay. Maybe, you know, pretending to be his son, but... Hopefully, he's still doing... Oh, man. Where'd he go? Gensen's at the hospital. He's gonna be staying in the hospital for a while, but... He'll live. That's what really matters. Oh, thank God. I see. Kenji, you got Gensen's wallet back from those punk kids? I can take it to him. Yeah, uh, please do. Oh, uh, before I forgot, this is from Gensan to you. It's a photo? Oh, that's what Gensan wanted to give you from his wallet. <laughs> Did he now? By the way, you... I don't know how to put this to you polite politely. Hmm? What is it? You're not actually Kenji-san, are you? When Gensan fell unconscious, he dropped a diary from his pocket. Hope he doesn't mind, but I read it. Kenji-san was a volunteer medic in an overseas war zone. He went missing and Gensan never heard from him again. Realistically, I'm sure you and I know what that means. Gensan probably knew as well, but he wanted to believe his boy might still be alive. So that's what happened. And then you showed up, looking just like Kenji-san. Uh, for a moment there, you gave old Gensan his son back. Oh, uh, right. Uh, take this. Sacrifice stone. This is... Uh, just a small token of appreciation. A uh, thank you. For giving that poor old man one last moment with his son. Well then, I'd better head back to the nest. I thought it was simply a case of mistaken identities, but it was more than that. Father's love for his son. Kenji-san, I hope you made your dad proud. I think that's a nice heartwarming note to end on, don't you? Another sub-story completed. Guys, we're almost there. If we take a look at our map, we have one that we have available to us right now, and we have a few others that I need to go around the town searching for. But that's gonna be it for this episode. So, on the next episode of Let's Play Yakuza Kiwami, I think we'll take a break from traditional sub-stories like this one right here. And start working on the next hostess. See you guys then.